Well, folks, I called it. If you will kindly remember last week, I said I would, I said I would be back this week after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl and have a special drink. Well, they won, and I have a special drink for you. Now, so tonight's offering is a Buccaneers drink, a Pirates drink. Thanks to Captain Morgan and the Pirates of the Caribbean movie franchise, everyone associates rum with pirates, and rightfully so. Now, Buccaneers is actually another term for pirates, and it's a term for the pirates who cruised or from the Spanish Americas down around the Caribbean into the lower southern Gulf area. And at the time, rum was the most readily available libation. Well, that and ale. Tonight's drink, again, in celebration of the Buccaneers' victory, is grog. And not just grog, but hot grog which is said to have been the preferred cocktail of pirates. Now, runners-up for tonight's drink would have been bamboo, which is rum, water, spices, sugar, and nutmeg. Also, sangaree, which is a red wine flavored with oranges, peaches, whatever fresh fruit they had. Today, especially if you're in Spain, it would be called sangria. Now, what is this show without you learning something? Something in case you are on Jeopardy, you could bring back to that. Now, grog is an alcoholic beverage mixed with water. In the early days of seafaring, the, in the early days of seafaring, um, good drinking water was at a premium. They would storm in cask on the ship. Now, because of the wood, the cast, the water quickly became slimy. And they would use the rum. They didn't want to dump the water overboard. They would use the rum to flavor the water, maybe kill some of the bacteria. And it would also ration the rum for long voyages. Now, the British Royal Navy perfected this by adding lemon juice and later lime juice to the mixture to, again, enhance the flavor but also to provide vitamin C. Now, this is why British sailors were at one point called limeys. Now, I know some may say that's a derogatory term, but it's a part of history, and here we don't show history under the mat because it might offend someone. History is something you learn from and you move forward. Okay, getting off my soapbox here, but it's true. All right. Now, the actual name of Grog is attributed to the Vice Admiral Edward Vernon, who in 1740 introduced the drink to his fleets in the West Indies. He was popular, or he was famous, for his coat, which was made of a grogram cloth, and he was called Old Grogram, or Old Grog, and the name Grog carried over to the drink. Now, for those old-timers from the military, the U.S. military, grog may have a special meaning for you. In a lot of functions, especially dining inns, there was always the grog bowl. A large bowl, sometimes an actual toilet, in which alcoholic beverages of all sorts were pour poured in all at once. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any infraction during the night, you were sent to the grog bowl to drink. Now, nowadays, I'm not sure about other services, but in the Air Force, you know, it's really watered down. You, know, you probably need a non-alcoholic grog bowl or a gluten-free grog bowl, you know, or they have the option to, you know, opt out, you know. So it's lost all of its luster being too nice. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox again here. But okay, again, Jeopardy, if you ever hear the term Splice the man brace. Correction, splice the main brace. That was the order given aboard a ship to issue alcohol to its sailors. Okay, enough, issue, enough history. Hot grog it is. Now, for my research, hot grog is simply prepared uh, with what the pirates had back in the day. They had ale, oatmeal, 
spiced rum or rum, and paprika. So you prepare the oatmeal the same way as you normally would, but instead of using water, you use the ale, which I've done already. I have some Foster's Ale in the fridge, poured in some uh, cinnamon and spice oatmeal, which kind of carries back in the 1740s. The West Indies was big in the spice trade, cinnamon, so it plays the course. And just as you finish cooking, you let it sit, pour in the, the rum, and sprinkle a little paprika on top. That is hot grog. So I've already fixed it up in the house. Excuse me here. And let's go ahead and try some, will we? All right, folks, enough talking. Let's splice the man breeze, main breeze. All right. All right, there you go. You can see a little bit of the ale, some of the oatmeal there. Okay, again, this is hot. I had it outside for about 30 seconds. It's about 40 outside. And um, the aroma, it's actually the cinnamon spice. You can pick up the rum in there. It's actually quite pleasant aroma. And for the taste, you ready? Okay, if you don't like oatmeal, you may not want to try this. But, um, okay, let's go for it. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I'm going to have a little quiz at the end of this. So get your history books, um, caps on, and we can go through it, okay? Bottoms up. Actually quite pleasant. You get the you get the uh, cinnamon spice very over. The ale really comes through. It's warmed up. I like it. Maybe the Brits had something with going with warm beer. Uh, to the Brits on here that may be watching, let me know down below. Um, and you can pick up the spice from in there really nicely. It is very good. You know, and a little bit of the paprika. Let me try this again here. So, you know, a little oatmeal will never hurt you anyways. So if you're adventuresome, especially for those cold nights, make yourself some hot grog. Celebrate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers victory. And I know what some of you say, but anyways, it's very good. Okay, for that quiz, a couple times when I started getting on my ramps, I said, okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Where did that term come from? What does it mean? Let me know down below. If you're the first one to get it correct, you'll get a special prize. So, folks, stay thirsty, enjoy your beverages, and stay warm.